Welcome, everybody, to the Thrive and Street podcast about mastering the art of thriving at life. We're going to talk about making change in our lives and in the world around us. I'm your host, Jeremy Jones, a.k.a. JJ, and I've got my co-host here, Gigi, a.k.a. Genevieve, a.k.a. Jen, which I never call her those things. I just call her Gigi. So um, this is our first episode. So if you guys are joining us now, we're going back and, and working your way down through all the awesome content I've been producing for years and years and years. <laughs> This might be a little bit rough, but uh, we're trying to keep it real here. So, um, Gigi, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, my goodness. I don't really know what to say. I didn't have an introduction <laughs> prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, um, so, for those of you who follow me, you, you probably understand that uh, my why, the thing, the thing that really drives me and motivates me is teaching people how to have better lives and teaching them how to thrive. And so, that's where the term Thrive Mastery came, mashed together, became Thrive Mastery. And my main platform for that is the uh, the, the gym programming um, that I sell that I sell to to gyms and individuals doing doing fitness programming. But that's not the only thing we offer, and that's not one of the things that really motivates me. I'm using that as a tool to improve people's lives. I don't view fitness as an end into itself. I view it as one of the things that we do to make our lives better. And so uh, this podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about fitness and a little bit about healthy living, but it's also going to be about uh, um, other things like sleep and, and habits and motivation and all the other stuff that I'm always uh, um, ranting about and, and, and posting about on, online. So um, I've got Gigi here because uh, for those of you who do do my workouts, there's probably some days where you're cursing my name, um, especially a day or two later when you're really sore. And uh, Gigi is one of those people that likes to keep me in my place and she'll, she'll knock me in line and she won't, she won't let me get away with too much shit. So so um, you, she, she'll be your champion when she's call, calling me out on my stuff. So uh, I'll have other guests on too. So that's, that's the plan. And um, the main thing I wanted to talk about today was why I think podcasts are such a great medium. And kind of some of the stuff that I've been reading is it's actually changing um, our culture um, from away, away from one that is fast consuming and not reading books anymore to, to one that's actually, uh, uh, people are starting to learn about much higher level concepts than they ever had access to in the past. Um, I know Gigi does some podcasts as well, so you, you'll want to check her out. Where can they find more of you, Gigi? Oh my God, everywhere. There's the, <laughs> we've got the Jim and Juice show, which is basically a show where we have a couple drinks and bitch about the fitness industry. <laughs> one's super fun <laughs> that's the late night thursday show <laughs> and, that and, one you can you can tune in live which is really cool and if you and if you're not in the industry but you're kind of interested in the in the fitness business or kind of behind the scenes stuff of what what um, coaches and gym owners are dealing with then um, you should definitely check that out and then i think you have what's your podcast with chandler well i have well i have a couple with chan but the main one um is the fitness experiment so the fitness experiment is client facing. Um, like I think this one is supposed to be right. So it's, it's not for owners or coaches. It's for people. And we deal with like four main areas, um, physical fitness, nutrition, mental health, and social capital. And basically that you have to kind of have a balance between all four of those things. Um, that's the premise. And then in each show, we kind of look at new new fads new science new stuff and we discuss it on a level where like lay people can <laughs> can explain it and um chandler and i both have science degrees but chan was a significantly better scientist than i ever was so <laughs> the podcast is basically him spewing science and me being like i don't understand explain it again <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so I, I have a science degree, but it's an engineering. So for those of you guys who don't know me, I'll do a quick, quick overview. Um, I start off as, a, as a, a mechanical engineer and I was competing in mixed martial arts. And I've been doing that since the 90s, well before the term mixed martial arts was even a thing. And uh, we never thought it'd be popular in the United States because it's a couple of sweaty dudes rolling around in their underwear and, and uh, make, try to make each other squeal. And it, then it blew up. And so then I continued to uh, train and coach MMA. And I think my last fight was 2009. So I guess this would be about 10 years ago now. Um, but then when I got into my 30s, getting punched in the face wasn't as fun as it used to be. So I kind of started to shift a little bit more to the coaching side. But in that process, um, I wanted to get fit for teaching or I wanted to get fit for fighting and so that I found this thing called CrossFit um, in 2004 I started doing CrossFit and then and then right around 2007 2008 I quit my engineering job full-time to then uh, run gyms and then that turned into uh, many locations our largest location being 
you know, 16,000 square feet, well over a thousand members. But, uh, um, but in the meantime, you know, the whole time my, my job, I viewed my job, I didn't realize it at the time, but I viewed my job as basically people were coming to me because they wanted to change their lives. They wanted to improve themselves. And, and usually for whatever reason, in that point in their life, they gravitated toward the fitness side. They wanted to lose weight. They wanted to feel better about themselves. They wanted to be able to do cool stuff. And so I found this, this medium to, uh, to do that with. And uh, I'd started developing workouts and, and, and education systems around teaching people how to have better lives. And then, uh, um, but it wasn't until years and years later that I realized that's what I was doing. Um, and so now that I have this more laser beam focus, um, it's, it's really great that I can, that I can help, that I, can help more people. And so that turned into, well, why can't I, why am I just helping people in my, in my local community? You know, can I take this and, and really change the lives of everybody, you know, in the world and create uh, more access and really try to really try to uh, uh, create change. So, so that's kind of my background. I have an engineering MMA background. It's very, very, uh, very unique in that regard. And, uh, um, and one of the things that, that I do pride myself on is um, kind of digesting some of the sciencey stuff and then trying to make it into real world application because that's that's where engineers kind of lie in the uh, um, in the spectrum of the science world. The scientists find that you know they make new discoveries or they create new things, but but the actual application of what that they're the things that they're researching um, need to then be applied to real life. You know, so you know science in a vacuum isn't doing the world any good, and and usually it's the engineers that have to then create the systems or the the processes that can then be applied. Um, in the field, right? And so um, the engineering school that I went to was very much more hands-on in the field. And we weren't, we weren't book engineers. I went to the Maritime Academy where we, had to, we were working on engines and we actually had to go to sea and work on ships. And, uh, um, and so it was very much you know, hands-on. And so I do view kind of the fitness world, like a lot of the coaches and things, a good coach is more like an engineer. You know, there's all these science and research. There's always contradictory things coming out. And it's like, how do we, how do we uh, distill this down into stuff we can use? And, and, um, and not just in the fitness, but also like psych psychological stuff and motivation and all that. So we're, to actual action, actionable things that people can do um, to get the fastest results um, possible, right? And so actually, is, that, is that only engineers can do that? It's just no, like, no, 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 no. That's just my thoughts? personal, that's just yeah. my, my personal uh -huh. understanding and in, in the way, the way it works. Yeah. Right. I'm not, no, I, and I'm not saying engineers do that. I'm saying that that's kind of the role, that should be the role of coaches um, is to take that, the, the theory and determine what is the actual application of it in the, in the field. And I know, you know, Gigi, your, is it your dad's an engineer, right? My whole family is basically engineers. <laughs> my dad, my sisters, my brother-in-laws, my cousins, my uncles, my aunts, everyone except me. And and <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're engineer, almost an engineer by association. But, but uh, for those of you who don't know, engineers view the world a little bit differently than most people through their education. Um, and, and, uh, uh, and, I, and I want more people in the world to, to understand that, right? To, to take that critical view, not just of, of the things that they hear, but also their own ideas, right? To be able to analyze their own concepts and ideas and look at the data, right? And, and then create real world um, applications for that. You know what else I want to add about engineers that's really interesting is that they also look at themselves through a different lens than any other people. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> engineers look at the world from a different point of view. No, you just all look at yourselves differently. That's what it is. <laughs> you have to you be don't have to be an engineer to do that. You have to be an engineer to understand. <laughs> oh really oh really i guess i wish i shouldn't say engineers but just science science people in general you know like one of the things that we're always hammered into in in these degrees is is that is that you can't trust your instincts right you know you have to you have to look at the information and it and you have to be ready to change your mind you know when the data shows something otherwise and i think being able to being able to look at a different a different opinion or a belief that you've held very strictly and then when something new comes up that clearly proves that wrong or slightly incorrect, then you can then adapt and change. And I think that's something that a lot of our a lot of society in general doesn't do. You know, they just tend to look for the, the data that supports their decisions, right? So how do you do that in your programming? Like what, what's the process actually look like? It's great that you're an engineer and everything like that, but like, what does that actually mean on the ground for someone who's working out 
if a new piece of research on, I don't know, a better way to develop your back squat comes out, What's the process from getting that piece of research in filtered through your programming to the actual person on the ground at the gym? So one of the things that we see a lot now on social media, especially Instagram, is people always trying to come up with a new, something new, some new variation or new training tool or methodology that's like, oh, this is the new thing. And it's, uh, and all that really is, is marketing. Generally speaking, you know, like, like through, I'll, I'll take a look at that. And if it doesn't, jive with you know what I know or what the research has set up at this point that I'm going to test it and then I'm going to say you know what this maybe there is something to this or you know what I really think is going on is I really think x y and z is happening and they're they're saying it's this but that you know it's like oh I've come up with this this amazing this amazing squat program that um, makes everyone's squats better and and uh, ultimately, it's like they're squatting three times per week. Oh, but we're doing all these crazy variations and we're doing this and we're doing all these tempo and blah 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 and it's like that none of that stuff matters. <laughs> what matters is, is is that they're squatting three times per week. Those advanced concepts may apply to somebody who's who's been squatting for for ten years and they're really trying to maximize that lift. You know, yeah, you're trying to add the last five pounds or something, right? Yeah, yeah. But to the average to the average person, like the if they're squatting three times per week, their squats are going to go up. You know, and and so you know, in the example you're you're asking for, it's like you know, when there's a lot of this new stuff coming up and, and, uh, when I, when I think about tweaking my programming, you know, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to have people test it. I'm going to look at the data. I'm going to say, is it really worth adding it in? Are we just adding a layer of complexity for, to make it fancy or for complexity's sake? Um, you know, one of the things I've been doing these, this programming now for uninterrupted for since 2006, I started program, I started creating workouts, um, when I really didn't know much about it other than from CrossFit in 2000 four and five. But uh, um, so about 13, 14 years, I've been making workouts seven days a week uninterrupted. And um, really was the first few years, I wasn't really tracking data that much. But then I finally realized, oh, I can use all my engineering knowledge and all my, my love of spreadsheets to start tracking this stuff and, and seeing, you know, how can I get people the fastest results while being safe, while having fun. And, and, uh, um, and then, and then, just keep modifying it and tweaking it and finding all those best, best practices. And so that, that's, that's one of the benefits of, of tracking and using data and more science-based versus, um, you know, just sort of making up what's going on or finding some program and then just following it and not really understanding necessarily. For example, the, the, um, there, are, there might be a great program, but does it work well in a class environment? Is it going to be fun? Are people going to want to keep doing it? You know, and, and so having all those things kind of fit together is kind of what makes the program good. You just but, said a whole bunch of things. What would you say are like the top five things? Like they got to have fun. It's got to work in the facility. Now I'm going to just go ahead and say five things myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'd say that the, the biggest things with the biggest thing with programming is, is it needs to be um, it needs to go flow well in a, in a class environment. It needs to be um, needs, in no particular order. So it needs to flow well. It needs to produce results. Um, it needs to be fun and, and, um, it needs to be, uh, have progressions over the long term. So you need to think about, can people continue to make gains for years and continue to be somewhat entertained so that they, they have new goals and they, they can see the journey instead of kind of hitting a plateau with either fitness, their fitness level, their progress or getting bored, you know? So having those, those kind of ingredients are really important. And, and it's interesting cause I, you know, there's, there's, tens of thousands of gym gyms doing programming and and uh, um and a lot of times i don't think a lot of them un have the same depth where they can think back okay like yeah like i can look at my programming from 10 years ago and i am so much better it's it's i'm insanely better with the programming because i've been been trying to refine it for this long right and and uh, um and a lot of people think oh my you know my workouts are my workouts are pretty good and you know anybody can make a a with a, with a little bit of education and, and, and some time can make a decent program for a person um, that's not going to hurt them and get them some results. But can, can they, you know, can they continue to do that program for, for a decade, you know, um, using those concepts? Does it, does it really work well in the class environment? Are people having fun? All, the, all those uh, things. And I call that the art of programming. I did a video about it recently. But um, one of the things I do want to cover today, though, and why you should listen to podcasts and audiobooks is um is is that is that um you know it's it like i mentioned earlier the the there's a fact that a lot of people aren't reading books anymore and it's and it's because of, we live in the world of distractions right you know we have our phones and we have our tvs with you know all the all the things at our fingertips all the distractions that we need 
And um, what's really fascinating is there has been a shift um, and a huge spike in the people listening to podcasts and audiobooks. And I think it's, I think it's great. Um, um, I do, I do want people to read books. I think books are, uh, um, are, are really important. And I also think that, um, uh, not the podcast and the audio medium isn't necessarily for everybody, but if you haven't started listening to podcasts and not just, you know, for fun to kill time, but also kind of, you know, educating yourself a little bit and kind of taking yourself out of your comfort zone, um, um, to try to become a better human, um, then you're really missing out, you know, and, and, uh, I really like some of the discussions from, you know, people like Joe Rogan and Tim Ferriss or these guys, they lead, they lead these long discussions with experts and, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, um, you, we, it was really hard to get access to an expert in a field and listen to them um, really go in depth about their sort of theories or what they're, what they're working on. And, um, and it's really great that now we have access, you know, for free to this, um, to this information. And I think it can really help the world kind of become more educated and, and think at a higher level and, and help their lives get better. Okay, so... All of that is very lovely. <laughs> it sounds really, really nice. Um, but like in the real world, when, when are you supposed to have time to listen to it? And I'm saying this as like someone who regularly, like I talk on podcasts probably more than I listen to podcasts, if I'm being perfectly honest. And the reason that I go on podcasts is because, and I have my own podcast, is because I, I realize and appreciate that it is a medium that's starting to get more popular, but in my own life, I can't even find time to listen to them. So like, what am I missing? Is there- how many, how many hours a day do you, or how many minutes a day do you read books? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> so you're one of those people who actually reads books, you know, like-, like I am, I'm an aggressive reader, yeah. Um, yeah. the, you know, the statistics say that, that the vast majority of people don't, haven't read a book in the last year. Um, and, and, uh, um, and even I struggle to read, to, uh, to sit down and read because, um, you know, they're like, I said, there's just, the, there's just the distractions. If I have, if I have the free time to sit down and read, I'm usually going to do something, um, try to do something productive, or I want to be able to turn off completely, um, where I'm, where I can tune out or just rest or whatever. And but so then what do you do with your eyeballs? Because that's what I can never figure out. Like when I'm listening to stuff. So I'm, I never, I like, never just. What do sit. I do with my hands, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with my hands? <laughs> um, I never just sit and listen and just zone out to an audiobook. That is, that never happens. So I'm always doing something else. And so this is, this is like, you know, life hack number one is, is that, uh, um, you know, multitasking is not good. Where you're trying to do two um, things where you have to think or, or bouncing between multiple project projects, very few people can really make that work. Um, and I think there, yeah. And so I think that, um, uh, I think a lot of people, you know, they're, they're starting to say like, okay, get away from the multitasking, you know, turn off your alerts, don't have pop-ups coming up when you're trying to do deep work in, on something. Um, and I think that's true. Like you can't listen to a podcast or an audio book while you're trying to, you know, write something or, or you're trying to create, you know, create some, maybe, you know, maybe if you're doing graphic design, maybe, but, but, uh, um, and, but when, when I listen to audio books, it's just when I'm getting up in the morning, when I'm, when I'm going through my daily stuff and I'm just walking around the house, I have, you know, my, you know, either my AirPods on or head, headphones and the phone in my pocket. And I'm just going around doing stuff, you know, whenever I'm driving, whenever I'm in the car. Um, I know you're a music you know, person. So you're always listening to music at those times. But, um, but I liked, I don't listen to music unless I'm dancing. So, <laughs> so uh, um, and so, so uh, uh, it's, it's always um, uh, uh, in the car doing chores, you know, like I could just be stretching or rolling out, you know, and, and um, I like to do a lot of, I, I do, I, just so you guys know, I do uh, uh, audio books. My mom used to commute. Um, we live in the Bay Area. And so she would have an hour and a half commute each way. And so she started listening to books on tape back in the uh, the 90s. And so then I started listening to books on tape. And uh, back then there were these, pl you go to the library and you get this, this, this like plastic thing and the tapes were like popped in there. And there would be books that are 12, 15, 20 tapes long, two-sided, um, that you would have to put in a tape player. And I had like the, the Walkman and I put it in and I listened to it on the Walkman or I'd plug, you know, they had the tape insert so that you'd like plug it in and then you'd stick the tape in the car and then it would play, it would play. And so I listened to a right. ton of audiobooks. Which How was, old were you? How old were you when this happened? 
Um, this was my teens and in, in, uh, 20s. So, like, all the other kids are, like, listening to, like, Green Day and shit on their Walkmans, and you're listening to, like, books with, like, a backpack full of other cassettes that are the rest of the books? <laughs> no, I usually just kept them in the car, and I, and I listened to them. And I listen to them at night, right, when I'm trying to fall asleep. So um, I do like to read before bed when I can, but, uh, but the light, you know, you know, usually keeps me up. And so I like to um, put on the audio book. And then, like, for Audible, for example, this is not a sponsored podcast, uh, <laughs> for, for Audible, um, there, the app has a sleep timer. And so you can set it for 8 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and you set the sleep timer and then lights out. And then it's like somebody reading you a story right before bed. And... Um, you know, but back, back in the day, you know, I would, I would, I, I started dabbling in it back in my, uh, you know, in the, in the nineties. And then, um, and then they started coming out with books on CD I could get from the library. And one thing I will say about, about, um, the library was great was that I, I didn't have a very large selection, right? Like it wasn't every book. And so I had, I would just listen to whatever seemed interesting, you know? And so then I started listening to, you know, outside of what I would normally listen to. Now the library stuff was almost all, all fiction type stuff. And, and, uh, um, and it was, which was great. You know, I got, I did get exposed to a lot of different, um, a lot of different, uh, you know, fictions that way. And it really kind of helped me, you know, develop a love for, for a lot of uh, liter literary works that I probably wouldn't have picked up on my own, you know, like listen to the Iliad on CD. And, and, uh, um, but what was great about CDs is I could then go to the library and get like five books on CD and then sit down and put the, uh, uh, put them in my computer and then download them all and burn them all into my computer and save them. And so I, I have at least 200 books from back, from back then where I, that I've saved that I've listened to some of them multiple times. And, and, uh, um, and then that was working pretty good. And then someone said, Hey, check out this audible thing. And, um, and then I started listening, which is great because it just streamed, you know, you can download it to your phone and I uh, didn't have to go through this process where I would get five books and I'd burn them all and then return them like two days later. And then, <laughs> and then a whole new world for me of technology that like, like, I had no idea. I might have a house full of books. Yeah. Yes. And like, switching to my Kindle was, like, that was a big deal for me. Like, having a Kindle instead of, like, whatever. I imagine it was the same of, like, okay, well, I'm, now I don't need to get the books, and now I'm just going to listen, and I'm just going to download it. I don't know. Is it even the same? This is a whole new world of technology. This is crazy. Well, what I, I, what I really like about, about things like Audible is it starts to understand the, the, your tastes. And so, and, and because it's such a, uh, because it's not a physical medium, they have, way, you, know, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of books being added every week. And they already have, you know, tens and tens of thousands. And in most, most modern books now, they will, it's already in the production schedule, right? They're going to, they're going to, uh, um, produce the book and then they're going to, they're going to produce an audio version. Um, and even the, like the more sciencey ones. And so what was great about audible was that I was able to then listen to, to ones that were more educational and more interesting, you know, versus, uh, um, versus just sort of the escape of, of listening to a great fiction, fictional book. And, and, uh, um, and so now, um, again, I was an early adopter of audible and I have well over 300 titles in my, in my audio book. And so I've, I've listened, um, to, to uh, so over 500 books in the last 10 years. And, and so maybe, well, maybe 15 years. And, and uh, so I do average a few audiobooks a month. <laughs> Most of the audiobooks I listen to are anywhere from the, you know, like the, the, the more sciencey ones might be like 15 hours. And then the, uh, uh, the, the, the longer ones, like some of the more fictional ones might be, you know, 40 or 50 hours. The, the longest audiobook in the Audible um, library is uh, um, Atlas Shrugged by Anne Rand, and I listen to that. I think it's like sixty-four hours. And, uh, One of my favorites. Such a yeah. good book. Yeah. yeah, and so and again, is that a book I'm going to pick up and read? Um, at the speed that I normally, you know, sit down and read, um, it would take me forever to get through a book like that. Um, when I do read physical books, I like to read the books that are a little bit more sciency or more conceptual, and I like to take notes. And so, um, so I, I kind of reserve that reading time for those books. Um, sometimes I get both, you know, sometimes I'll get the hard copy and the, and the audible version. Okay. 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 So where's the connection then from Jeremy's trip down memory lane to listening to podcasts today? So, so, uh, you know, I just wanted to, I just want to talk about the, the, the audio, 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 uh, uh, medium. And, and that, again, I know that people are not, are not likely to start reading, 
you know, like a lot more than they currently do. Um, but I do encourage people to find those podcasts that are going to expose them to new ideas or stuff that they, they, they wouldn't necessarily pick up a book on, you know, habits or, or a book on, um, you know, like uh, Skin in the Game, Nassim Taleb's new book, um, and just read it because because if they're going to read, they usually want to you know read something that's more entertaining. Versus you can you can get the audio audio version and then listen to it as you go about your other other daily tasks, right? And get your brain kind of working. And and it's like it's like added time. So go, going back to that multitasking thing, you know, while you're brushing your teeth. You could be listening to an audio book. Like so while you're driving from point A to point B, you're listening to your audio book and, and you're expanding your, your knowledge and you're learning about, you know, different things. Now, you shouldn't always do sciencey stuff. I still do a lot of fiction. Um, um, I, try to, I try to go back and forth and sometimes I have multiple books going at once. You know, like right now I'm, I'm working through Sapiens, which is a pretty interesting um, take kind of on the history of the, of the uh, Homo sapien branch of the the, the homo the homo chain and um i i wouldn't read that's how he describes it how's your science the um i'm trying to keep it simple the uh the the it's not that's not a book i would normally pick up right and just want to read right and so and so it's it's, in, it's interesting to hear these concepts and you know kind of connect the dots between other things that i've learned um um, but at the same time, I'm listening to a fantasy fiction book that a friend recommended. It's a series and it's long. So I like it because it's, they're long books and there's like 13 books in the series. And, and so I go back and forth, you know, so it's, so it's not all just, you know, um, kind of just, you know, getting away and, and kind of escaping from, from my own, uh, you know, from everything else that's going on. But, uh, but then the same thing goes with podcasts, you know, one of the, I think one of the things that like the, one of the most successful podcasts Joe Rogan does is it's entertaining and he asks lots of really good questions and um but he brings in these interesting guests and sometimes they're funny and sometimes they're weird and sometimes they're really interesting and and so so he's he's sneaking in this kind of these this educational stuff this this human development type stuff on top of all the other things and he does these podcasts that are two three hours long and you know if you guys are listening to this you've probably heard a joe rogan podcast at some point um and i and i and i think that that's a that's an important shift um, in our society. And I think that's where a lot of people could benefit is just by adding on this extra layer of, of education and learning that we can do while we're doing other things. Um, so one of the things for the podcast that I have listened to, you kind of touched on it there is that it is like very conversational. And I think that I, I mean, it's just nicer to kind of listen to people conversing as opposed to being lectured at. Right, which is like if you're reading a book, you're just absorbing information um, from like it's a direct. I'm trying to upload this information to my brain, right? But when you're listening to a conversation between two people, it's a little bit more passive, right? And you can kind of absorb it a little bit. You don't have to pay attention to it as much, I think, right? Like it doesn't take your undivided attention because it's more just like, oh, that was a really good point. What did what did she just say? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then you can kind of go back or you can just listen to the discussion carry forward and you can kind of put the pieces together that way as opposed to being like, shit, what was the definition of that word again? Let me go back and look it up. Like you can absorb. Yeah, you know. yeah. I I, I, I think the power, that's the, one of the powers of the podcast is like I said, I like to, when I'm, when I'm working out by myself, I like to do the podcast because again, I don't have to have my full attention. I do recommend you guys on, aud on audiobooks and on the uh, podcast, you can speed things up. So, you know, one and a quarter, one and a half speed. It sounds fast at first, but bel believe me, your brain adjusts. And if you've ever done this, you need to, if you haven't done this, you need to try it is you speed it up to like one and a half speed and listen for a few minutes and then go back to normal speed. And it sounds like they're talking really soon slow and, <laughs> and so and so it's really funny um but but again that's that's one of the benefits of the podcast is it's a little bit more um like i said like you're like you're part of a conversation but what the benefit of audiobooks is and this is books in general not just audiobooks is that it's it's been uh, um it's the information is much more potent because it's been curated and edited, right? So, so that's why a lot of the more informational books tend to be a little bit shorter because it's not some, it's not just rambling. It tends to be more, um, you know, going all kinds of different directions, it tends to be more concise. And, and um, that's one of the reasons why I've actually been a, a fan more of the audio books and the podcasts. I, I, I don't listen to podcasts every week. Um, mostly when something piques my interest or again, I'm just, I'm just working out. Um, I do my audio books every day. Right. So, so I go through headphones. Um, I have to, I have to like buy 
like these cheap, they're, they're pretty durable, but there's, but I wear them out because I shove them in my pocket and they eventually, they eventually stop working. I Fun buy fact. like, when, when you call JJ on the phone, you have to play this game. I like to call it headphone roulette where he <laughs> answers the phone and then you have to kind of wait and hear like the clicks and like the, the jumble and like the staticky and the alien. Pairs of headphones that work. So fun. it's a good game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When my, my last, one of my last pairs just wore out yesterday and I had already ordered the next, the next, the next, I usually get them in pairs and I usually have to order them two or three times a year because I'm wearing them all the time. Right. So, so, um, and I don't like having the phone up or whatever, but, um, uh, but yeah, so, so, that's the benefit of the audio books is it's a little bit more potent, you know, information, but, but again, it's not easy to do as much, you know, if you're not doing like mindless stuff, sometimes you'll miss it, but there's also like on audible, there's a, there's a back 20 seconds or back 30 seconds button. And if you'd like tune out for a second, you just hit back, back. And then you're like, you're back on track again, which is really great, which is, you know, what you do when you're reading. Um, um, I do think it is easier on audio books to kind of like, uh, you know, tune out and realize you haven't really heard what they've been talking about the last you know few minutes or whatever and i don't like the bill the the fact that i can't take notes and there are there are ways to grab snippets and you can make bookmarks and stuff like that and i've experimented with that but for the most part it's it's not the same as like say taking notes in the margin because one of the things that i do when i read books is i write all over the books i underline things and i have coding systems and and then i um a lot of times i'll go back and review it while i'm reading it so i go back and look at my notes multiple times and then after i'm done with the book i go back and i pick it up um, and, and I can get the whole synopsis of the book in a few minutes just by flipping through all my, all my notes. Well, I think we're done for today. <laughs> well, guys, this is, uh, um, the Thrive Street podcast, and, um, we're going to be talking about, um, all kinds of stuff regarding, re- regarding life and life hacks and how to make your lives better. Um, I do plan on talking about some research that is recently you know, that is coming up and we, again, we, maybe we can distill it down into actionable items or if it's things you should be pay, paying attention to. Um, we'll also be talking a little bit about fitness and, and gym programming like we did today. But again, that's not the main goal of this podcast. You know, I, I do have to thank Gigi for pushing me into finally pulling the trigger on this. It's something that, that um, I've toyed around with for, for, for a long time. But, uh, um, but I think that, you know, to her point, and, and this is really important, is that, um, you know, the actual like creation of the workouts is, is just one small thing that I do. And, and uh, my core mission is to help people have better lives. And so what I'm really excited about is having a, a new medium to be able to educate and entertain people so where they can, again, learn and become, become better humans. And it's something that I can be excited about, which is this podcast. So Thanks for joining us, and uh, um, we will be releasing these whenever they come out. <laughs> <laughs> so no, no set schedule yet. We'll have to see how, how it works out, and uh, um, I look forward to the next one. Later.